Before we get to our regularly scheduled program, I just love saying that, uh, but I did want to share a, a kind of an announcement and a little bit of information for some of you. Uh, one of the, the painful things that I have to do is when I get uh, emails from people who say, count me in. Now, I know exactly what they're talking about because a couple of years ago, we were doing these challenges and I told people, if you want to be a part of this challenge, just send me an email and just put count me in as the subject line and we'll make you part of the challenge. Well, haven't done any challenges for a while. I just have uh, just haven't been able to make the time to do that uh, with all the other things I am doing. And so when I get these emails from people saying count me in, uh, sadly, I just delete the email. So there's nothing to count in right now, but I am working on, uh, or I'm planning to work on a book. My, one of my goals for this year of 2025 is to get a book out uh, about beating diabetes in four to six months. And uh, I'm gonna take some of the, the programs that I've done in the past, put them in written form and put together a book and add some extra stuff as well. So pray for me that I can get that done. I, I can't promise. I can only say God willing, but uh, I am definitely making that one of my goals this year. So please don't send me any count me in emails anymore if you didn't realize that. But uh, be patient with me and hopefully I can get a book to you guys uh, sometime by the end of this year. If God gives me that long to live and uh it's going to be all about basically taking one of these challenges that we've done in the past and putting it in written form and showing you here's what you do. One of the good things about this book will be uh, the more I do this Beat Diabetes channel, the more I learn and the, the more I can refine just what it takes to beat diabetes in a short time. And so I know things now that I didn't know even two or three years ago. I've got ideas now that I didn't have then. So... I think it's going to be good and maybe, who knows, maybe we will do a challenge in connection with the new book. I don't know, but at least I would love to do a book and uh, be patient with me and I'll try to see if I can't get that done this year. All right, here's an individual who says, I acquired neuropathy in my feet and hands that didn't stop until my blood glucose was under 150. Interesting. He somehow recognized that when he could keep his blood sugar under 150, the pain in his hands and feet, the neuropathy pains, would go away. He says, most that I know of are much higher than that when they start to experience this discomfort slash damage. Yeah, some, it's, it's amazing. Some people seem to get away with higher blood sugar for longer than others do. Some people, by the time they're reaching... 150 blood glucose, milligrams per deciliter. They're having all kinds of problems and others, they're not. And that's the, the maddening thing about diabetes. Some people can live with a 7.0, 7 7.2 uh, diabetic A1C range for years and they feel pretty good. They don't seem to have any symptoms. And a lot of times it's hard to talk them into making any change because, yeah, my, my A1C is not so good, but, hey, I'm feeling okay. And I was at a 7 A1C five years ago, and I don't seem to have changed. I still feel good. The smartest individuals are those who say, I see trouble coming. I don't know when it'll come. It could be a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, but it's coming. And I don't want it. I'm going to head it off at the pass. And I'm going to back off from this diet of poisoning myself with white flour products, rolls, bread, sandwiches, rice, potatoes, candy, cake, pie, sugar, fruit, fruit juice, Coca-Colas. I'm going to back off because even though I can't predict when it will come, when the neuropathy will start to appear in my fingers, when the neuropathy will start to happen in my feet, when the blisters will form on my, on my feet, when the doctor will come in and say, I'm sorry, we'll have to cut off that left foot. I don't know when that'll happen. Or maybe I could even slip by into my 80s and it would not happen. But I'm not taking a chance. I'm going to eat for my health. And I'm going to head this thing off. 
So if you've gotten by with it, let's say you're 70 years old and you've pretty much eaten a standard junk diet for all these years and you say, well, yeah, I'm diabetic, but I don't feel too bad. And I've still got my toes and my feet and my hands don't hurt. My feet don't hurt. I'm, I'm not doing too bad. Maybe not. And thank God for that. But you don't know when it'll come. And it's not smart to tempt fate by eating junk and expecting you can still get away with it for another year, another five years, another 10 years. The good news is neuropathy can be uh, made to go away in many cases or at least dissipated to the point where it's not nearly so bad. Some people have it terribly. I've had people tell me they couldn't hardly sleep. They would go to lie on their bed and their feet would just burn with the pain of the neuropathy. And it was very painful to the point where they couldn't hardly sleep. Now, in my case, I never had neuropathy that I know of. I did have arthritis when I was in my late 40s, not even that old. I know if you're 25, 48 is, is old, but I didn't think of myself as being too old. But I started to get painful arthritis in my hands. And uh, I was taking the supplements that are supposed to help. They didn't seem to help. And finally, when I went low carb, I wasn't even thinking about my hands. I was thinking about my glucose and the, and the fact that my blood sugar was running all up and down and causing me problems. And suddenly I realized my hands are good. I mean, I still got the twisted knuckles that I don't, they don't look too pretty, but they don't hurt like they did. Once in a while, there'll be a little twinge, but not much. And I'm so thankful. So the good news is you can make changes that can really fix things in a, in a big, big way. And some people say, well, I've gotten along this way. Like the one couple that uh, I read about, one of the comments, the guy said, well, my parents said, I'll just live this way until God takes me. Yeah, that's fine if you assume that you're going to live relatively healthy and then suddenly you're gone. I mean, if we could do that. Or if somebody said to me, well, here's the deal. You just go ahead and eat the standard diet. You eat the junk. And uh, it'll cut your life short by two years. But you'll still be healthy. So if you change your diet, you'll live to be 87. And then you'll pass quickly. Or if you just eat the junk, you'll live to be 85, and then you'll pass quickly. I might be tempted to say, I'll just eat the junk. I mean, two years is not such a big deal if I'm going to be healthy up till then. The problem is, what if you live for a relatively long time? Let's say you make it to 85, but your last 20 years are miserable. You've got pains, you've got toes cut off, you're in and out of the hospital, they're doing uh, angioplasties, and you've got arthritis, and you're just a wreck. You make it into your 80s, let's say, but your quality of life is terrible. So that there's really two goals when it comes to longevity. One is obviously to live as long as we can. The other is to be healthy during those years. That's why one of my prayers has been, Lord, help me to live into my mid-80s or beyond in good health, with good mobility, strong heart, clear lungs, good blood sugar, good blood pressure. I don't want to be a burden on my family. I don't want them to have to be taking me back and forth from the hospital constantly and sitting up with me in the hospital and telling me how sorry they are that they cut off my legs. I don't want that. Not only for myself, I don't want my family to have to endure that. So we need to make changes. It, it is interesting, though, that he said, I could tell that if I could keep my blood sugar under 150, the neuropathy would go away. That's not blanket across the board for everybody. Some people, it may have to be lower. Some people, it may be higher. We can't say. But for him, he was pretty sure, as long as I keep my glucose under 150, I'm good. I don't have it. Now, 140 uh, average glucose is not a good A1C, and it is a diabetic a, uh, A1C. If you translate 140 as an average uh, blood sugar measurement and you turn it into an A1C, uh, you're diabetic. So 140 is not good, but 
uh, it's good that he was able to get his neuropathy under control. And it, it sounds to me like he's been well under 140, not just barely under 140. I want to remind you that we've grouped certain videos together into series that are available for you to download on your phones or computers. Out of the many hundreds of videos I've made about diabetes, I put together three series that I consider to be the most important and fundamental for the newly diagnosed diabetic who is desperate to get their blood sugar down in a hurry. First is the original series I call the Diabetes Emergency Kit. Second is the series titled More Fundamentals of Beating Diabetes. And third is my latest series called Beat Diabetes in Six Months, and these are videos specifically created from our Beat Diabetes Challenges. There'll be a link in the description that will take you to where you need to go to purchase any one or all three of these Beat Diabetes series. You can watch the videos immediately on your phone or computer, and you can also download them. Also, I give you permission to copy these files, put them on a flash drive, and share them with someone you care about.